Um, now, one thing that is really putting uh, putting flame uh, fuel on the fire for this is Obama's daughter was at least from what was reported to me, was in the Chiapas district during this earthquake. Here we have Obama threatening, I mean, telling Israel that we're not going to war with Iran, and I think that uh, that this may have been a way to send Obama a real clear message that we had better do the bidding of the elite or this can happen. Interesting, very interesting correlation. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We have something really, really serious here, folks. Um, you need to get on this site if you're not if you're not on it right now, and and look at this link to the Mexico quake verified man made. It is a smoking gun. What has happened in this drill that was planned ahead of time is exactly what happened in real life. Now this says a lot of things. It says we have an earthquake machine that that uh, we have a way to trigger earthquakes now. Now, if you, I have a link to uh, a report on the on the front page, um, and it's also linked to in the Fukushima report. If I can't find it fast enough, where uh, where uh, 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 yeah, military briefing with Secretary of Defense William Cohen. That's link number sixteen on yes. the home on the front page. Click that, and it's going to take you to this military briefing. And this was done in 1997. Um, it's right off the U.S. Department of Defense re website. You scroll down about two-thirds of the way down the page. That's a massive document, so it's kind of hard to, uh, how to, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to find this, but when you get there, it says very specifically, and this Cohen speaking in 1997, it says, others are designing some sort of engineering, some sort of, oh, wait a second. Others are engaging in even an eco-type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, Set up earthquakes and volcanoes remotely to the use of electromagnetic waves. So there are plenty of genius minds out there at work finding ways which they can wreak terror upon other nations. It's real, and that's the reason why we have to intensify our efforts, and that's why this is so important. Now, the reason why this report is so important is because it's not a blurry UFO photo. It's not some guy <laughs> spouting off about about some nonsense that happened in a cornfield. This is a Department of, uh, Department of Defense Secretary William Cohen speaking in an official DOD briefing and saying that this is a reality. Well, one thing that Cohen didn't say was that these systems that he spoke about in 1997 would have been developed by DARPA and owned by America first. So, so uh, uh, it's obvious, you know, that uh, that these systems do exist. Um, that's a perfect explanation for uh, for why this earthquake happened in uh, in uh, in uh, um, Mexico on cue. And now I need to get on to something really, really interesting. This earthquake, when it happened, was a very, very smooth movement. Um, it uh, it moved east. I, well, let me think. What are my orientations here? Uh, yeah, it moved. Uh, it moved north, south, and east. Um, a pull to the north, a pull to the south, and a pull to the east, and there was never any vibration of any sort. And if you look at the damage damage assessment that came out of Chiapas, only 800 homes collapsed there, and it was a 7.9. Well, in Mexico, a lot more of the homes than that are going to happen, are going to fall from a normal 7.9. Um, you know, a 7.9 is a pretty devastating quake. If you if you scroll down to the mails from Japan, the true perspective, and you click on that, I have emails from Japanese readers talking about these really, really strange, gooey quakes that feel like they're standing on a spinning top and they don't feel natural. These people are very experienced with feeling natural quakes in their country, and they're saying the one that they felt on the day Fukushima happened, the one that they felt... The days before Fukushima happened and all of the aftershocks after Fukushima do not feel like the normal Japanese earthquakes. Well, if you've got some sort of a gravity wave pulling on the earth and moving it and simulating an earthquake, you're going to get your movement, but you're going to be able to tell the difference between that and something that truly came from the earth. One way to clue in on this earthquake machine is that these earthquakes are all originating at a depth of 10 kilometers. All the reports of the aftershocks, the reports of the Fukushima quake, the reports of the quakes that preceded it, and the report of the quake coming out of Mexico. All of these quakes happened at 10-kilometer depth with consistency. 
Here it, ha here it says right here. I've been checking the USGS. This is a writer from Japan uh, writing to me. It says, I have been checking the USGS regularly and noticed there are a lot of depth 10-kilometer quakes. The 311 and the 411 are both depth 10 kilometers. Do you have any idea what this means? Scalar weapon, harp, or just coincidence? These are Japanese people saying this. So they right. know there's something wrong. They know that there's something wrong. Okay, and well, um, I actually have to tell you that I was in Belize during the, the Mexican quake, and I have a quake. I, I have an earth sensitive. I can feel quakes in my feet before they happen. And I have to say that uh, the night after the Mexican quake, I, I had, uh, like, the worst night of my life, feeling a very, very tremendous amount of, of, of vibration, but it, it's like hidden vibration. So that actually, what this person is saying uh, in this letter is, is exactly the constant vibration idea. Uh, this, is, this is exactly right what was happening during the Mexican quake. Yep. And here's another testimony out of Japan. March, March 9th, early afternoon, I was in a doctor's office with my dad who was in a wheelchair. I was standing, then I felt dizziness. I looked up on the ceiling and found things were swaying. Nobody said it was a quake. I would explain it as standing on a big wobbling top. It was slow and not vertical nor horizontal. It was a magnitude 7.4. And my comment is, if no one said it was a quake and the Japanese are familiar, familiar with the quakes, what is this motion which caused a seismic reading of 7.4? I believe now that the earthquake machine places stress on a region with a circular pull, thus creating the spinning top feeling to pull out of all potential weak spots in all directions with the hope of triggering something big. Very interesting. Yeah, yes. uh, it actually sounds like possibly it's, it's, it's got another objective besides just uh, being a, a quake. And I'm yes. not sure where that's going. I don't know if we're talking about moving the magnetic poles or trying to affect that that the magnetic poles i you know i don't know enough about science to say what that what creating a but but if you do create something that is circular that is a vortex that is tall toroidal kind of a a, a a situation going on you're going to trigger um, anything that could happen okay because you're pulling in all possible directions okay everything's broken up i can't hear you okay i can hear you fine uh, you're coming through loud and clear Okay, I want the readers to go back to the uh, the uh, Fukushima uh, the the the, uh, the Fukushima page. You can either type Fukushima Gemstone Freelance Fukushima .html or scroll to the link on the home page that says Fukushima sabotage. We're going to go over the quake now. We went we already went over Fukushima. We're going to go over the oddities of this quake. I've got all the seismic records. I've got videos of the quake out of there. Um, I want to scroll down. If you scroll about a third, away, a third of the way down to the page, you're going to see a picture that says what everyone failed to notice. Absolutely no quake damage on anything as a tsunami rolls in. Right. And if you look at these pictures, um, I've got a link to the Japanese building codes for their homes. The Japanese have an attitude towards wood-framed homes that they're temporary and they're garbage. They tear, they tear them down after 20 years. So if anything would come apart in an earthquake, it would be one of their wood-framed homes. Their homes, when, when you get a wood-framed home, like pictured in this very first picture here with a tsunami coming in, all these homes are perfectly intact, uh, uh, intact, and it's very important to realize these are specifically intended to be disposable homes inside. They don't have interior walls. The Japanese homes are built with a great big open space, and then they have these dividers that they put up they get their privacy in certain areas that are not any kind of freestanding. They're just they're just these freestanding dividers, and I'm sure you've seen them like at swap meets or or at Chinese markets where it's like this paper divider with a wood frame. This is what they use to divide up their uh, to divide up. So what I'm trying to say here is there's no interior walls in these homes even to give them strength against an earthquake. So in this very first picture here, we should see massive earthquake damage in these homes if a 9.0 had ever happened. In, in, uh, in the next frame, we have a lot of concrete structures as a tsunami rolls in. Um, you can see uh, old concrete buildings that weren't built to standards are completely undamaged. You scroll down even further, you see cars perfectly parked in the parking lots like nothing happened. If a 9.0 happened, it would flip cars from the parking lot. A 9.0 is so bad 
Um, the USGS actually produced a chart for a 9.0, and they said that the vertical acceleration um, was 12 Gs for 0 0.3 seconds. 12 Gs for 0 0.3 seconds. That is, and that's at the epicenter, MYG004. At least, at least the USGS was honest, and they said that the quake occurred inland. The media was the one that put the quake out, out, out in the ocean. The USGS never claimed that. The Japanese never claimed that. Um, everything regarding this quake's epicenter put it at, at station MYG004, which you can see for the very next picture down the page. Um, the seismic reading was a 6.67. For that site, um, the USGS produced a chart um, for a 9.0 and said that the ground pulled uh, uh, 12 Gs in a vertical direction. Well, if you've got the ground pulling 12 Gs for 0 0.3 seconds, you're going to have cars that are smashed like tin cans on the hunt. They, they can't hold 12 times their weight for three-tenths of a second. Um, they're going to be smashed and thrown, not neatly parked in their parking spots. So when you see all these cars parked so neatly as the tsunami rolls in, that alone is proof that this quake never happened. It was, there was never a 9.0. Um, anyway, I've rambled a little bit. Okay, no, it, it's okay. Uh, but I also have all the links. here. It's a full chart put out by the USGS. Um, if you click okay. on that, it'll go in. Um, they offer no re reading from MYG011, which is closest to the 9.0 epicenter. Um, but they did produce one LG poll. Well, maybe, was, maybe that was the one uh, by, by the... So it, it's been a long time since. And if you scroll further down the page, um, I have um, all the... Uh, the uh, uh, the highest peak intensities measured at any seismic stations in Japan, and then the uh, the uh, one from the one that's closest to the uh, reported epicenter. Um, so there's the three highest, and then the closest to the reported epicenter. Um, this is about halfway down the page. Um, if you go on the links page, um, let's see here. If you go on the links page, it's going to be link number. Uh, Okay, you're saying okay. that 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 what they got was a 5.6 uh, worth of shaking. Well, well, that's uh, a 5.67 uh, worth of shaking was well away from the real epicenter. Right. Um, the the real epicenter was a 6.67. Okay. All right. We'll be right back after the break. Okay. This is. Carrie Cassidy, Project Camelot, Whistleblower Radio. And we are talking to Jim Stone. A uh, fabulous show, I have to say myself. Uh, very interesting information you, you're, you're bringing to the fore here, Jim, uh, and, and doing it very well, I might add. Uh, so I, I want to ask you about the earthquake itself because it looks like it was a, you're saying it's a 6.67 was yeah. the, the actual quake itself. But do you feel that this was harp-induced, or do you think this was natural? Uh, it's definitely harp-induced, um, but I think that they got lucky um, and triggered a something something natural with their, and that's why they decided to go ahead with their, uh, you see, if they're going to set up nuclear weapons in the Japan Trench to trigger a tsunami, and they set off six, um, there's, if you go through the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the emails from Japan that's very, very well described there. They, there were six tsunamis. There weren't one. Uh, there were six. So when one, you know, had finished, another wave came in and pushed it harder. Then that one finished, and another wave came in and pushed it harder. Then that one finished, another wave came in. There were six total tsunamis, and, uh, and some of my writers from Japan said that there were boats washed up to as high as 120 feet above sea level. So we're talking something that really, I mean, this tsunami was something that was just, just crazy, um, in some areas anyway. Of course, right. uh, how far it washes up on the shore all depends upon geography and how things get funneled and, and things like this. But the fact that we ended up with, with boats and things from the ocean 120 feet above sea level, we're talking something that was just nuts. Um, okay, but why, why did they, why, why the three-pronged attack? Uh, you know, well, as, as in 9-11, if they're going to have a nuclear facility explode, they've got to have a reason. If they're going to have the towers collapse, well, they've got to have the planes go into them. If they're going to have a nuke plant explode, they've got to have a tsunami to provide a plausible scenario. They okay, can't but just we have understand it. that, okay, the tsunami was like the cover, right? Yes, the tsunami was the cover. Like, the tsunami is the equivalent of the airplanes on 9-11. Okay. Now, 
to explain the side this because we are getting on the seismic signature here. Um, if you click on link four on the home page, it's going to take you directly to the picture where I have the most relevant seismograms out of Japan.